<coughs> Excuse me, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, <coughs> date it is March 18th of 2017. I've had a cold since uh, the 3rd, and today is the 18th. So, uh, my, I'll probably cough in your ear here a few times, so forgive me for that. I'm better, but... Uh, <coughs> uh, wanted to talk about a couple items. I'm not sure if this is going to be 10 minutes with or 10 with Jim, 10 minute video. I think not because I'm going to discuss something that I think I will probably ramble on. So I'm not sure how I'm going to post this is uh, on my YouTube site. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is. Uh, Donald Trump and the wiretapping uh, situation, his claims of wiretapping that he was, that President Obama, you know, ordered wiretapping of, uh, of him. Everyone uh, says, you know, that it's, you know, of course, that President Obama did not. Uh, the FBI, the Justice Department, everybody. But Donald Trump persist with this. Apparently, uh, you know, he got down where he blamed the UK security people. He said, well, the UK security did it for President Obama. He contacted them and then they did it. And that's why there's no record of it. And then uh, the UK was not happy about this at all and demanded, I guess, a apology. And apparently the White House apologized. But then Donald Trump, uh, after that, uh, goes on, you know, continues with his. So that is a mess. We have a mess of a problem there. Um, now, <clears throat> excuse me. I noticed that President Trump got that. He admits now that Donald Trump got his information from Fox News. Fox News is not a real news source. It's a propaganda source. Uh, and they're... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I mean, you just can't depend on, you know, can't depend on them as a news source. They're not, what is it, what do they claim? Most trusted name in news, or I forget what their, their little logo is or slogan. And not only did he get it from Fox News, but he got it from commentary from, what is it, Judge, uh, Judge, uh, I forget the guy's, the judge's name, who's a commentator. So not only did Donald, of course, Fox News is really bad about putting out things as if they are news and they are actually commentary. Then, of course, they can use that as an excuse and say, <coughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't news. It was commentary. Uh, they're really bad about that. But that's where the President of the United States is getting his information. And when he gets something that fits in with his uh, prejudices and his thinking, then he accepts it. And, you know, it was on Fox News and it was on a commentary. Uh, somebody said it, so that's where he got it. And he sticks with it, not just this, but in all these issues. So that judge, uh, now I'm, <laughs> I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a judge, never been a lawyer, never been a judge. I've done a lot of things. You know, I took one class in constitutional law in community college. I don't think I, I took, you know, of course, police administration and patrol techniques and a lot of other things, but I took one course in constitutional. But for years, I don't have cable news right now. Uh, I don't have cable except for the internet, haven't had it for years. Uh, 
when I had it, I occasionally would flip by Fox News. There was a few times I took them out, so they weren't in my thing. I couldn't even go to them because I didn't want to even, you know. But there's a few times when I, there was times when I watched it, and I would stop on Fox News to see what their point of view was. And Judge Common, whatever his name is, would be a, he's been a guest, he's been a commentator on there for years because he's a judge. <clears throat> and every time I saw him talking on a subject, you know, I mean, I'm like, again, I'm not a lawyer. I didn't study constitutional law. I didn't study law at every time he would be talking on some subject and it would be like he would be the, he'd be talking like he was the authority on this. This is doctrine. This is like it's, you know, out of the Bible or whatever. He would, and I would, I would think to myself, he's full of shit. Is this guy really, a, a, you know, a judge? I mean, did, did he really go to law school? Did, I mean, you know, because everything he said, I mean, I don't know anything about law. I don't, and I'm listening to this guy and that's crap. So this is where Donald Trump got this from. And so I, you know, Fox News, the problem with Fox News is if you want to be a guest on there, if you want to be a commentator, <coughs> then you have to fall in with the party line. It's like the, it's like communism, you know, they, you have to, uh, whatever their words are, whatever their, their prejudices and their issues and their agenda is. And, uh, then you have, so if, if you are a judge, maybe this guy is a, maybe he's a respected judge who has published material and books and all this kind of stuff. But if he wants to be on there, he has to give Fox news what they, you know, what they want has to say what they want. So I guess he would, either he is totally stupid or he is just, uh, hey, I'm going to give him, you know, I like the money and I like being on there as, you know, uh, so I just give them what they want. I don't know what his problem is, but unfortunately, I mean, he's on there, you know, you and I watch, we can make up our own mind. Of course, if you're a hardcore you know, right winger, you're going to believe every word on there. But some of us can watch something or hear something, no matter where it is, and say, uh, "No, I don't think that's, I don't think that's right." But uh, <coughs> pre unfortunately, the command, President of the United States, the Commander in Chief, does not have that ability to discern when something is, you know, and to uh, pick his sources. So, man, this is a, this is a problem. I'm, it's scary. It really is scary. Now, let me see if I can move. And I'm already, I think over 10 minutes, I believe. So this is not going to be 10 with Jim, I guess. So let's see. I think I clicked on the wrong thing. I think this was supposed to be with this Thing I was just discussing. Okay, yeah, here we go. Well, let me, before I go to this thing, let me go to this. <clears throat> On a um, professor, uh, probably, yeah, Professor Robert Kelly was being interviewed on live on BBC News. Now, by the way, BBC News, uh, or the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, of course, they've had recently uh, some things come out about one or more commentators or people who were on uh, the BBC uh, network for years. It had some real problems with... Uh, I'm not sure if it's pedophilia or because that's, <coughs> I forget, uh, 
pedophilia is under, uh, I don't know, there's, there's two or three different terms, and we all use them incorrectly. Uh, if somebody, though well, that's not what I wanted to talk about, but so they, they have had problems, but uh, the British Broadcasting Corporation and is the premier, I mean, it has always been, they have been, their news service has just been the standard. Like, of course, right-wing people aren't going to agree with this, but like here in the United States, the New York Times newspaper, that's the premier standard uh, for excellence. And uh, worldwide for broadcasting or whatever, it's been the, you know, the British Broadcasting Corporation. So, uh, <coughs> this professor here was uh, doing an interview and at home, you know, he's at home, but he put a map up on the wall there to... Uh, a world map to kind of make it look like, you know, he's, and he's got a table there sitting next to him that I'm sure he put, uh, the books that he's published or works that he has published have, you know, there or whatever. So, I mean, he's, you know, this is, this is his chance to be on the British Broadcasting Corporation. And when he goes to school, if he teaches, you know, if he's teaching or lecturing, you know, when he goes, uh, the next day to school, the students are going to say, oh, we saw Professor Kelly, you know, we saw him on the BBC News. And when he goes to the class, <coughs> so a big thing to him. And also, you know, maybe it's, I don't, maybe, I don't know how many times he's appeared, but maybe this is something that he's hoping that works into, you know, a regular thing where from home or whatever. Uh, the BBC, because he's talking about North Korea. I guess he's an expert on North Korea in some <coughs> some game in some area. So he's doing. I wonder if I can do this without being have a copyright. And you know, he's doing this. Scandals happen all the time. The question is, how do democracies respond to those scandals? Uh, and and what will it mean in. for uh, for the wider region? I think one of your children has just walked in. I mean, shift is shifting. Shifting sands in the region. Do you think relations so, with the north may change? Okay, so he's and it was uh, I'll put the link uh, links below to this but uh, His two kids come in while he's doing this and then his and I was watching or I watched the on CNN they had the clip saying, you know uh I'm watching, and then you see this lady come diving in there, and she scoops up to like super, like Superwoman, you know. She grabs up these kids and, you know, gets them out or whatever. And uh, that video, I mean, people were watching that live, but then that <coughs> video goes on YouTube and gets, okay, well, it's had, 21 million views as of a week ago. So people are, you know, watching that. So uh, then when I was watching it too, I thought at first I thought, well, that's his wife, you know, scooping those kids up. And then I, I could see that she was, I don't know, it was kind of hard to see. I don't know, Chinese, Japanese, Thai, Filipino, I don't you know, something. So I thought, I wonder if that's his nanny. And then I thought, no, the way she scooped those kids up, it was like, you know, like a wife and a mother or whatever, saving him from being embarrassed on TV or something. But then I saw the video where the, uh, and it's had 5 million views. Okay, the BBC News are, is the one who put the, uh, of course, I saw, I think, on, CNN and clicked it, but I guess it went to BBC News because they've got the 21 million. Then they posted, BBC posted this one of uh, the interview with uh, him and his wife with the two kids there and everything. And uh, I think she was the one, I think she mentioned that uh, uh, she was a little hurt or they were a little hurt that people assumed that she was you know, the nanny instead of the wife. 
<coughs> and I thought the same thing for a, for a second. I thought, is that his wife or, uh, you know, is that a nanny? And so I don't know if that makes me, uh, prejudiced in some way. I'm not sure. That's just what popped in my mind. But so, uh, I see that the interview, uh, the Wall Street Journal also, they got a million views from the, uh, interview of the family. But then I just found this a few hours ago. Woman interrupts, interrupted during BBC interview. And uh, I'm, not, I'm just going to... The question now is how do people respond to their scandals? For the wider region, I think one of your children has just walked in, but I mean, shifting, uh, shifting sands in the region, do you think relations with the North may change? Um, it's un... Clear at the moment what effect former President Gun Hae's impeachment will have on the territories. Unfortunately, discontent in South Korea is not only related to President Gun Hae's administration. <laughs> okay. This is a major so, announcement uh, for South Korea. <coughs> Watch this. This is uh, funny as hell. Very good job of editing. A great job of the, the editing. Watch this. I'll put the link to this uh, down below. But then I... Uh, it's had 7 million views, but look at this, 35,000 likes and 27,000 thumbs down. The people didn't like it. So that's, you know, that's, and I thought, what the heck? So I had to read the comments and people are, you know, this was funny, well done, but people are, some people are thinking that this is an attack on the husband because he pushed the, uh, well, you have to see this video to understand, but uh, because he kind of pushed his girl back when she came in back like that. And uh, by the way, maybe I should explain to you, you know, this is uh, photoshopped and or whatever. I mean, this is the... Uh, woman interrupted during BBC interviews that they're making fun, you know, but so, uh, but yeah, people are f going crazy, you know, and it's uh, both sides of an issue or maybe there's more than one side, you know, are <coughs> getting all upset over it. Uh, and uh, anyway, just Kind of shows you how the internet is, how the World Wide Web is, how how YouTube, you know, how YouTube is. But uh, I'll put the links. I don't want to close this now because I need to come back when this video is done and put the links down here below. So the next subject, and uh, I want to talk about this. Uh... Last week, a guy jumped over the fence at the White House. So now this is the first that I heard this evening that tonight it's almost 4 a.m. So a few hours ago that this guy who jumped over the fence was for, I guess, over 15 minutes. He jumped over the fence. Uh, I guess he set off some detectors. And then he was tried a door apparently, looked in a window and it took them, it took uh, the Secret Service uh, over 15 minutes to locate him and find him. That's unbelievable, unbelievable. And, and they're doing an investigation and I'm sure there's going to be a very thorough, you know, complete investigation. <coughs> uh, so I, you may have seen the videos. I, about a, was it a year ago or two? I went, my, uh, my daughter who lives and works in Washington, D.C. Uh, had me come out for two weeks and uh, she took off. I think she took off the two weeks or a week. I can't remember. And then uh, her husband, uh, he showed me all around. Well, both of them did, but 
when she couldn't do it, when she did have to go into work a few days, uh, he took me all over Washington, D.C. So, But all of us, we went to the, of course, they, they go regular places like that. But that was my first time in Washington, D.C., my first time in the uh, northeast of the United States. And so, and I'm a news fan and a history fan. And, <coughs> and so it was really great to be able to be uh, to see the White House and all the other places that I saw and to be there and to stand there and whatever. And that when it was daytime when we were at the White House and security was unbelievable, uh, not in the White House, we were outside the White House. Uh, I mean, unbelievable. Dogs, uh, uniform, you know, uh, what uh, protection service, you know, on bicycles and patrol cars, uh, the sort of a park area out in front of the White House, which I actually I think is the back of the White House. Somebody I think said, but it's where you always, which what you think is the front of the White House. Um, there was a kind of a small park area out there, and there were people there uh, in it. And I mean, you, I was in the park area and you can see security standing there, security standing there, security at the, beyond the fence, you know, security outside the fence, security, you know, that you can see. <coughs> and I don't know in the park area where we, small park area, and there was uniformed uh, officers riding on bicycles there. And there was probably uh somebody dressed like I was or something in there that was security. And there was a guy out there who definitely had to be, you know, uh, secret service uh, security because he was, uh, you know, in a suit and a tie and it was hot and he was out there standing around in the, you know, looking around. So unbelievable security that cost tons and tons of money and is very important, uh, and, uh, you know, people, there are people who are, who want to commit suicide by a cop and the White House is, they think a, a good way to do it. And then you've got a lot of mentally ill people who are, and probably this guy was, who, uh, so, I mean, they need, they need good security, but if, 15 minutes. So I don't know what the problem is, but I'm sure they're going to, they've mentioned that they're going to, they're going to investigate this and uh, find out what the problem is. Uh, what I was wondering about was what time he did it. And apparently like at 6 p.m. they have, when they go back, you know, look at the video, they have video of him out on the sidewalk rocking around with a backpack at 6 p.m. But he went over the fence apparently at midnight. So, uh, what my comments and I may be a hundred percent wrong. Uh, I wonder how their security, they're going to investigate all this and I'm sure they, my God, they should have the best security in the entire world. Is there security, uh, you know, they have three shifts. I mean, he jumped over at midnight. At midnight, are they changing shifts? Uh, also, I worked hospital security for over 18 years. And a good part of that was on the midnight shift because I wanted to be away from management and bosses <coughs> but and in all my jobs even as I was a welder I worked midnight shifts for a while everything uh, I never went to sleep I never went to sleep on duty I never did I all my jobs I gave 100% you know an honest day's pay for an honest day's you know I worked on when I worked midnight for most of those years. 
<coughs> I kept the same hours, you know, if I worked a midnight shift, when I had my two or three days off a week, I stayed up all night long, and then I went to bed just like I would when I worked my midnight shifts. I'd go to bed at 6.30 or 7 in the morning, and it's just I kept the same schedule because I didn't want to go into work and not be 100. But, you know, that affects your social life and your, your family relationships and everything when you do when you do those kind of things. And I don't think most people do that. Most people try to... Uh, now, I did work a shift at one hospital that had, they had me working three midnight shifts and two day shifts. And I was on midnight shift. I was, oh man, I was dying. I wanted to go to sleep. I needed to go to sleep. I almost crashed into some, you know, things driving. And for a second or two seconds, my eyes would close. Uh, and on the day shift, it was the same, you know, the same thing. So, I wonder if the shift, I wonder if they are changing. You know, I'm thinking that they've got to, you know, I'm thinking that they don't just have three eight-hour shifts. I'm thinking that uh, they may have. Some of their officers are on uh, three eight-hour shifts. But I think they, I would be thinking that they would have some of the officers on two 12-hour shifts and that those officers would not be changing, you know, at midnight. That's the reason you'd have these other, you know, shifts. You'd have some officers, you know, doing the, the shift change at midnight. But you'd have some would be doing their shift, would come in and do be doing theirs at, you know, 2 a.m. or 10 p.m. or something. So you don't have uh, all your people going off duty and new people coming on duty at a certain time because the people going off duty have to finish up some paperwork they have to inform the new shift coming on of what you know has transpired what to watch for <coughs> i'm sure they have that figured you know i'm sure they have that figured out but the the thing is with the sleeping that is uh, that's a problem uh I've known police officers and security officers who slept, you know, who slept on duty. I've known nurses who slept on duty. Not when, I mean, not when they had, you know, uh, like ER nurses would put their head down because there was no patients. <coughs> or uh, I've known air traffic controllers who, you know, there's two of them working, supposed to be working, and one goes and sleeps and one does the you know so that that's something you have to be aware of uh, uh, and two they you know we know that the White House is a, the grounds are alarmed and all that type of stuff but we don't know what well we don't know what type of alarms uh, motion detection uh, pressure I'm sure they have a combination of things and closed circuit TV or whatever. So this guy jumps the fence and there's probably some motion detector things in the ground that detect uh, jumping or running or something. <coughs> but, you know, we don't know does that ring in on the alarm system an exact location? You know, does that ring in uh, so that it pops up on the screen and it's exactly where this person walked or jumped over or does it cover a you know could it be any of 40 things that are in the ground now the camera would be would immediately go to that area and you'd see the entire area but it wouldn't go to the specific you know uh i knew some i took the test for federal protective officer and uh passed it but I didn't get hired in because uh, I was asked if I was willing to go from Kansas City to Des Moines, Iowa. And I said, yeah. And they sent two or three names. And I wasn't picked. You know, mine was one of them. But I wasn't picked out of those. And then by the time, then they put a freeze on federal hiring. 
Uh, and it was several years went by and I told him, you know, never mind. Uh, so, but oh, anyway, so I was interested. I was going to community college and I was paying for all my classes, but everybody else that was in the classes, the police department was, you know, they were police officers or were federal protective officers <coughs> or some other type of officer. And theirs was all, all their uh, tuition was being, and books and everything. I don't know, but you can take a look at the Bing search link I added in the Alexa app. Echo volume zero. Uh, so I was the only one paying in the entire, but there was some, there was three guys or four that were federal protective officers from the federal building in Kansas City, Missouri. And so in break time, I talked to some of them. And so I was interested because I think I was still on the uh, registry. Um, and they were complaining, oh, uh, the federal building, it's, it's, this is just a terrible job. Every time the wind blows, the detectors on the windows are vibration that'll, you know, and they go off. And I don't know whether they had to find a specific one that went off or whether they all set off and they all had to be, somebody had, an officer had to go up like, I don't know, 20 floors or whatever to all the windows one at a time and reset these by hand. And I thought, you know, you're a civil service employee. Uh, you know, you're paid by the hour. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't bother me. I mean, I would just be the job and I would just do it. I wouldn't be complaining about it. <laughs> but, <coughs> you know, you wonder, okay, these detectors, you know, they go off and how specific are they? And how, are, you know, how often are they tested? I worked at a hospital where I was, in charge of the fire alarm system and uh, other things. I was a supervisor there and the training officer. And, and I didn't start doing it. It was already when I took the job over every, not only did I do the fire alarm drill or test uh, once a month for each shift or something, I forget exactly that, but every week I would go and test a, you know, they would, this, I, this, I would contact a switchboard operator and say on a it's same day every week, you know, we're going to, I'm going to conduct the test on the fire alarms. And I would go to a different location. And then I would, uh, like a nursing, if it was a nursing station, I would go there. And to whoever was behind the counter, you know, a nurse or a doctor or whatever, I'd say, have you ever pulled this fire alarm and I think all of them said no it, you know like oh I didn't know there was a fire I didn't know that was the fire alarm and then I'd say okay just hang on a minute I'm gonna have you pull it <coughs> <coughs> so the switchboard operator would page you know we're testing the I forget you know the we're doing a test of a weekly fire alarm test of the uh, fire alarm system here if you do not hear the fire alarm in your area please call the operator and let the operator know. So then I would have the person, you know, pull the alarm and they would say, oh, I didn't know it was that easy to, I didn't know her, or, or I didn't know it was that hard to pull or whatever. And uh, uh, so, you know, those things were tested. Now I'm sure, you know, the, the White House is surely, surely all these alarms are, uh, Surely there's nobody sleeping on duty, uh, but they're going to be f on midnight shift or whatever. And I think they're probably being overworked. They probably don't have enough people, and especially because of uh, President Trump being in office in a large family and uh, different locations and all this kind of stuff. So they're probably shorthanded and uh, Republican administrations never want more federal employees. Uh, they want, you know, fewer, they don't want any, uh, federal, so, but hopefully not, nobody is sleeping. Uh, hopefully the alarm systems are all, you know, going in, hopefully they're being tested. Um, there was an incident back uh, a year or so ago, or maybe a bit longer, 
where a guy fired rounds at the White House and uh, a female uh, federal, whatever they call their White House security, uh, White House security. Uh, <coughs> she was inside the White House and she heard the bullet hit the building. Uh, there was more than one apparently. And she, you know, got on the radio and a supervisor, her supervisor or, or whatever said, oh no, that uh, uh, noise you heard, there's uh, some equipment working, you know, a generator or they're digging, a, there's a backhoe or something that backfired or something like that. And I'm not sure if she, you know, came back and said, no, I think it was a bullet, you know, or whatever, but that put an end to it. And two or three days later, they discover bullet holes in the White House and then they figure out what, you know. So that's a thing is, are there, are the people working there, you know, able to, you know, are they told you'll stand, you stand right here. I worked at a hospital where uh, knee-jerk security. Uh, they had on midnight shift, I worked a midnight shift, they had an officer take the patrol car when I went to work there, and it was a part-time job. Uh, I was to take the patrol car and go up on the sixth level of the, par of the parking garage and sit there as employees were coming to work, and then they started parking on the sixth level on up. The lower levels were for visitors and patients. Uh, so, and then the guys that worked there told me, well, you know, we used to park, we were ordered to park on a, a different level, but then something happened and then they had us parking on this other level. <coughs> and then something happened on another level and then they had us park on that, you know, they were, that's where you go park, don't move the car, you know, so, so, uh, how much, you know, that can be, that can be a problem. And I got a feeling that might be the problem of, you know, okay, you know, this is your station. You stand right there and you don't, you know, you don't move. Uh, and then also the thing with the supervisor, I hope sleeping is not a problem. Uh, you know, of a supervisor saying, no, uh, don't pay any attention to that, or that's just the weather setting off that alarm, or we get that alarm all the time, or, you know, something. I hope that they, uh, hopefully they're hiring good people. I hope that they don't uh, hog tie them with, you know. But on the other hand, if you have a station, I mean, it, there's nothing wrong with saying, one officer will be in this box watching this area all the time. But if you have another officer there, uh, he should have the ability if he thinks he needs to, you know, and you need to be, uh, I'm talking too long on this subject, aren't I? Anyway, I'm really interested in, of course, they're probably not going to release too much <coughs> about this because then that tips off uh, people and you don't want them to, you don't even know where your weaknesses are and you uh, but security's a problem I worked with a real nice lady I worked at a hospital a real nice lady she was the security officer on midnights who worked at the nursing dorm and then for a while two nights a week when she was off I relieved her uh and I was single at that time. That was kind of nice. All these young student nurses were there, you know, and uh, visiting with me. And But anyway, she worked, okay, not real nice lady, worked there for years, uh, security officer at the nursing dorm. She came in every night that she worked. She came in and immediately filled out her activity sheet for the night. The very same. Came on duty. You know, she so she comes on duty like at midnight, 
and she's writing a thing, and then she puts down, I checked such and such a door at 2 a.m. I checked this, at, you know, her activity sheet was the same every night. Uh, I worked someplace, can't remember where that was, where they had a big parking lots or whatever, and in one of the parking lots was a security booth or whatever that nobody manned anymore. But there was an act, there was a sheet there that was, you were to make your rounds and you were to go in there and you were to sign the sheet that, uh, that you had been there and you had looked around. And what people did was it was filled. Somebody went there and just filled the thing out for a week. <coughs> and, uh, I worked security at a small Lee Summit Hospital for about a year. Uh, I forget the name of the place next to it. It was Retirement Village or whatever. And every morning, like at 5 a.m., the dispatcher would hit a tone, you know, a beep that would go out. And that was to wake up the security officers that they had that were had gone in a car someplace and parked and uh, were just taking a nap or whatever until they got till the alarm, you know, till they got the tone, they would wake up. Uh, midnights are a problem for not just security, not just police, not just fire. Midnights are, are, are a rough shift to work. You have more health problems. You have more marriage difficulties. You have, I mean, it's just a problem. And uh, one one police department, that I, I talked to the, you know, one police department, they rotated their people every few months. So you'd be working the day shift and then you'd go to the evening shift for a few months. Then you go to the midnight and then you'd come back to whatever. And that's not a good idea. I don't care. And anyway, I happen to be the, uh, captain or assistant chief or whatever he was at the hospital one night and uh, something came up about and and so he he oh yeah here's a way we do it or whatever and I said well your way is fucked up it's wrong and so then he came back oh no you know uh, da, 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 and uh, I knew because I not not only for you know 18 or, or 20 years or so working security and uh but as a welder i even you know so i came back and i i pretty much devastated him with uh the information you know the are the things that no it's not a good idea and he was saying well you know we rotate you know the supervisor rotates too or whatever and i said uh as part you know part of it i said uh, well if you're going to do this properly you should rotate the supervisors Occasionally, so they're with different personnel. They're with different people instead of their own, their own people. And I said too, I said, uh, I think the chief of the police, you know, the chief of police, and you, you should all. If it's such a great idea, you guys should, you know, not just work the day shift. You should work the evening shift. You should work the midnight, you know, shift or whatever. Anyway, I had a whole bunch of things, and he was kind of he was an asshole, and uh, he he kind of looked at me like, yeah, Jim, you're you know. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so I'll be interested. Well, we probably won't find out, but uh, th this is serious. The White House needs to uh, <coughs> they <coughs> need to work on that. I've <coughs> excuse me. I'll be 76 this year. The first president I voted for, John F. Kennedy, was assassinated in office. I lived through those times. Uh, we don't want anything like that to ever happen again. That was traumatic for everybody. But of course, things were different back then. Back then, there was, I don't know, three or four TV stations. And that was it, I think. And uh, there wasn't anything else to, to watch. There wasn't any internet well, the internet might have been there was no world wide web I'm trying to think no there wasn't any internet i don't think 
I think there might have been. But not the worldwide, you know, and no communication satellites. Uh, so we all, all Americans, watched the same thing. You had a choice maybe of NBC, CBS, ABC, and that was probably about it. Maybe there was national public television. I don't know. But so we all, and I think I've made a couple of videos on that on YouTube uh, about the, uh, the times. And I think I was damaged. That was like, sort of like post-traumatic stress disorder, I think, for me. And I think for my entire, for a large number of my entire generation. And things would be different now because like on the 9-11 situation, when the uh, aircraft hit the, the towers and whatever, and of course also in the Pentagon and the plane that went down and uh, but when you're watching like 9-11 and you're seeing people jumping out of the the windows you can switch to something else you can go switch to a comedy channel you can go and switch to you know you can you can bring up a, <coughs> a video game and it's just uh, so you can get some type of rest from it, but we do not want, uh, we want to protect the president of the United States and not just the president, but all, you know, public officials. We don't want any, you know, and I, President Trump is cutting a lot of areas that I don't think he should be cutting money from, such as the Coast Guard is one of them. Uh, I don't think he should be cutting money from uh, the CDC, Center for Disease Control. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, uh, polio before the vaccine. I remember that somebody said or the news said or something that <coughs> if you had polio, that you wouldn't be able to uh, touch your chin to your chest. And every night when I was a kid and I went to bed before they come up with a vaccine or whatever, I would touch my chin to my chest to see if, you know. Uh, and now, you know, uh, President Trump is going to cut money from CDC. And, well, back when I was a kid or whatever, when they came up with a cure for polio, or not a cure for it, but a preventative for it, uh, <clears throat> then before long, we started coming up with new diseases. And I thought, my God, you know, I, know, I thought we, I thought we had all this research and whatever, and we eliminate, you know, tuberculosis, which we haven't. We eliminate polio, which hasn't been totally eradicated around the world, you know, but I thought we eliminated it, but they keep coming up with new things. That shouldn't, you know, shouldn't, they shouldn't keep coming up with new ones. But anyway, I've rambled on too long. So this is going to be one of my long videos. So <coughs> maybe next time I won't have this cough. I thank you very much for uh, what I'm not sure if I, covered everything the way I wanted to, or if I just bored the crap out of you. If I did, then my mission has been accomplished. Thank you for watching.